Welcome to episode one of the Thought Grenade podcast. Today it is myself, Tyler, joined with Colin, or joined by Colin. That's me. I'm and Colin. uh we got some topics to talk about, but we're just gonna go through them and hope you enjoy listening. Yeah. All right. So we do have a little bit of an agenda as to what we're going to be talking about. Would you like to use one of your topics or? Well, so I think uh, one I would like to discuss with you uh, why you want to do this with me because I don't know that. And I want to tell you why. I want to do it with you. And I think that's a good place to start on a podcast. I agree. That is a good place to start. Um, so those of you who are not familiar, which is everyone pretty much. Yeah. This is no one's actually listening. <laughs> no one listened to the first podcast either, but which was like a, a ghost file at this point. Cause it probably won't exist anymore, but this is an idea of mine to just really record some podcasts with my friends and, uh, just talk about random things and whatever we have on our mind or things that have happened to us recently. Um, and then I had started it a while ago, and the first one was meh. I actually listened to it again recently. I didn't think it was that bad. But uh, – and then Colin reached out, reached out to me, who he unfortunately wasn't able to be in the first one. But he reached out to me and said that we just started up again, and I agreed because it's still something I'd wanted to do. But with everyone's schedules and things just didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, I think the podcast, again, just talking about random things is going to be very similar to our videos in that it's almost like mm -hmm. a scrapbook or a catalog of like just mm -hmm. us talking. Yes. Yes. So, so it doesn't really have to be huge. It doesn't really have to be like, we don't have to be famous or anything. It's more for us to look back on and, and mm -hmm. see our conversations. Exactly. Yep. So uh, to... I have I actually haven't listened to uh the pilot episode. That's what I'm going to refer to it as from now on. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. I I have never I I I started listening to it I think the day after um not the day after it happened, but whenever you uploaded it, which was um, like a week later, I think. Yeah, I listened to it the next day mm -hmm. or I started to and I I've never finished it. Um but so I have been, as you know, uh, consuming a lot of podcasts. Um, is this a new thing for you, consuming podcasts? It, like, are, are you new to the podcast scene? So I've regularly listened to Ear Biscuits for a while, yep. but I always watched their YouTube videos. I never, I could never get into actually just sitting down and listening to it because I felt like I was wasting time, not in the fact that. Not in the sense that I wasn't enjoying myself, so mm -hmm. that it felt like a waste of time. I was enjoying myself doing it, but when I'm watching the podcast, I'm not spending time with my wife, or I'm not doing chores, I'm not playing games, I'm not doing the other things. And podcasts are so long that it takes up a lot of time to watch and or listen to the whole thing. And the other day... Right, I don't even know what made me do it. I got in my car, I plugged my phone in like I always do, and up came my little screen, and I was clicking on Spotify, and I saw the podcast tab, and I clicked it, and I started playing an Ear Biscuits episode, mm -hmm. and it was one of their recent ones. I think it was, um, it was Rhett's uh, spiritual journey. So the yep. third third episode of that little like mini series yep. arc yeah that they had about the, their lost years is what they had dubbed it yep yeah um i i listened to rhett's um spirit or his spiritual deconstruction is the official Correct. name yep and i i was enthralled like it was it was life changing in, in a very like menial way but mm -hmm. like i was at work telling my coworkers, i was like listen if you <laughs> if you enjoy podcasts Try listening to one on your way to work one day. If you mm -hmm. have a decent commute or if you have a long drive, just just try it one time. And it's been life-changing. I've listened to, I think, well, so I listened to Rhett's links yep. um, and then a couple uh, older episodes. 
and then I've listened to two episodes of Bill Nye's podcast. I'm up to what? What is that? Like six? I just named. Did you um listen to the first two episodes of that spiritual journey? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, those ones are ones that I actually watched. Oh, okay. Um, and I, I took the time specifically to watch them because I uh, I have learned I've always known that I enjoy listening to other people speak. Mm-hmm. Like update videos on YouTube. Yep. You give me a thirty minute Shady Penguin update video, <laughs> and I'm gonna watch it. Yeah. Immediately, I yep. love it. So I uh, I definitely agree. Like or I've been listening to podcasts a little bit longer um, mm-hmm. on that topic. Uh, again, you said that if you have a, a commute where a lot of my job is actually driving um, and where I work specifically, I don't see a lot of customers. So it's really just me and music kind of gets boring after a while. Mm-hmm. So I consume quite a bit of podcasts, uh, including Ear Biscuits for a while. And I agree on the fact that uh, watching them seems a little counterproductive just because i don't want to sit there and just watch people talk for an hour or so yeah for Um, that long like there's a certain there's a certain some people enjoy that which i get um that's really not for me like my girlfriend prefers to watch the podcast as opposed to listen to them Mm -hmm. so i guess that's a difference but um so i definitely agree there Um, the reason i want to do it though specifically and it it was Rhett and Link's uh, Lost Years that mm-hmm. kind of inspired me to reach out to you. I, I had thought about it, obviously. I've been thinking about it for a while, but that was really the final straw, I guess you could say. It's just because I want I want to talk to people more. Yeah. Um, and specifically, you and uh, Matt, Brandon, Manny, even I want to talk, you know, to to Ronnie. I would like to have someone like Ronnie, mm-hmm. um, other friends that are a little further outside of our little five person group. Yeah, and even and in that people. five person group, you and I are much closer than anyone yeah. else. I mean, Manny and Matt spend some time together, but mm-hmm. um, but I just want I just, I want to talk to people more, especially my friends more. Yeah, I agree. I think um, I think obviously we're all friends and we're close and we know each other fairly well, but I feel like there's certain topics where we just never, it's almost in a way taboo to talk about like Mm -hmm. religion and, and just like general thought processes, processes. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it'd be cool to kind of talk and get to know each other even better than we do currently. See, and that I, that, that exact thought has crossed my mind because I, what was it? When did, I don't know when we initially started thinking about talking about this, but mm-hmm. I have been thinking about this since we agreed, like, yes, we are going to do this. I've just been, my mind's been racing almost with ideas and thoughts and things to talk about, things to say, how, what I want this to be. Um, and like you said, this is not, remotely even close to an attempt to become relevant or famous or or anything like that if no one listens to this podcast i obviously wouldn't be hurt by it we don't have a following of any form neither of us do correct um so we're not we're building it from the ground up to start with and in today's age on the internet that's a very difficult thing to do so that's not even a thought it's i really just want to talk to people more and i want to learn more i've been listening to bill nye's podcast and it feels almost like the first time i've learned something since i graduated and that almost that almost hurts me yeah to say that like i've obviously learned things i've grown i i'm married I live on but my in, own. But that's like – those are like life experience things as opposed yeah, to yeah. even just like – so that's like a, a street smart I guess you could say or like a common sense mm. knowledge whereas yeah. I agree. I think you and I are pretty similar in this that we would very much enjoy like learning like mm-hmm. book smarts as well. Like yes. why do things function the way they do? Yes. Like so I've messaged you the couple topics I've listened to from Bill and I's podcast. Shout out to Bill and I. You, you're a real one. Mm-hmm. The, the first episode I listened to was about memory. And that was a cool episode. It wasn't uh, as interesting as I thought it was going to be, but it was really cool. It was pretty enlightening. Yep. And then the next episode I watched, watched, listened to, was about 
the deep the deepest parts of our ocean uh his guest doctor scientist i don't remember what she was mm -hmm. um she was an oceanographer who studied the bottom of the ocean like she controlled the little submarines and all that stuff like the marianas trench and, and things yeah like that. yeah like things like that the deepest deepest parts of our ocean to learn and it, it's something i kind of knew obviously light doesn't reach the bottom of the ocean because it's just that deep there's no mm -hmm. light um but the base form of organism at the bottom of the ocean like the very very lowest level of the food chain is single-celled organisms yep and these single-celled organisms are what's called or not what's called they survive off the process called uh chemosynthesis so uh our building blocks of life up here are plants right plants are kind of the lowest thing they absorb sunlight through photosynthesis and that's yep. how they survive and then an animal eats the plants we eat the animals so on and so forth it's much more complicated it's our it's our cycle all right it's you know that's the very the most basic version that i can tell you without taking up too too much time yeah but down there it's you know life is built essentially off of um chemosynthesis they they absorb chemicals so like i think sulfur is one of them um from the volcanic material and they they turn that that's what they use as uh, a fuel to survive and then something eats that something eats that and it mm -hmm. works its way up the food chain and like that's cool to learn that's cool to know even though it never is going to apply in my life i'm never going to exist that that ship has <laughs> sailed long ago yeah but it's just cool to know and it's cool to learn like i enjoyed that it was a good time i i think we're in an age too like i very much agree i think it's cool to know that stuff and i think we're also in an age where people in their brain because information is so accessible people don't hold on to the information that they do learn um like people could just look that up and then just forget it within the next 10 minutes right i and i feel like that's what i've done like i've looked up stuff but i don't remember i think to other. retain the knowledge is just a whole nother level and it, it's very i it's in a way exciting i guess it's like discovering something new mm -hmm. and also here while i have it pulled up i uh so the I'm going to say it's the last episode because I'm probably going to pull that episode down the first episode or the pilot, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, that was May 6th, 2019. Hope you enjoy my clickety clack <laughs> keyboard. <laughs> um, can, I, can I read you the definition of chemosynthesis just so if um, on the off chance someone does in fact listen to this, mm -hmm. I, can, I can give them a better um, um, definition of it. Yeah, like synopsis. Of yeah, so I just Googled it. It, this is just the Google kind of dictionary thing. So chemosynthesis, the synthesis of organic compounds by bacteria or other living organisms using energy derived from reactions involving inorganic kind of chemicals, typically in the absence of sunlight. So that's the definition. If you huh. listen to this, it's really, it's a cool thing. Cause it's like, it, it's completely opposite of life up here. Like it's just it's the two opposite ends of the spectrum. That's why the deep ocean is such a you know it's com it's you know space is what they call it the final frontier. But we know more yeah. about space than we do about the, the, the deep oceans. So yeah. it's cool to know. And there you go. There's your fact of the day. <laughs> there there right. it is. Yep, you learn something new, right? Yeah, and you um, I don't know if we'll get into it on this podcast, but you had mentioned uh, the first one you listened to by Bill Nye was Memory, um, yes. and then that what that sparked in my mind was uh just dreams. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if I don't think we'll necessarily talk about that today, but it's something I would mm -hmm. definitely like to to get into is just dreams, and I always thought the concept of dreaming and and things like that are very interesting. Very um, interesting. So you can just only like because like. And and the frequency at which people dream, how yeah. some people don't dream, like Alyssa doesn't dream very often. Um, so so that could cool actually could that like also I love dreams, like I love dreaming. I don't mm -hmm. really care if it's a bad dream or a nightmare. Oh. Some people say like I would rather have a dream than I'd rather have a nightmare than no dream in a way. 
interesting i know but that is interesting yeah sure. i'm a little odd i guess i don't know um, it is a little odd but actually kind of kind of similar um i know when you wanted to talk about the inner monologue um mm -hmm. saying that Alyssa doesn't dream you also mentioned to me right before this but i didn't know that she also does not have an inner monologue Yes, she is void of an internal monologue. She does not have one. Her brain is darkness. So that's how I view it. It's, yeah. Again, I have not done enough research to fully confirm how I feel about it. And verbalizing how I feel about it is still very difficult. Mm -hmm. So what I was so what I've at least learned from my very little research on that topic is so does she I I think I would assume you've talked to her a little bit more about it because mm. it's been interesting. So instead of like thinking in words, does she think in pictures? She has described it that way. Okay. Um, last night, actually, I can, we were on our way home from my parents' uh, anniversary party. Mm -hmm. And we, <clears throat> we drove. So she, we took separate cars, but I, so I picked her up. Yep. And I had, I had to drop her off in her car so she could drive it home. And we were listening to uh, Bill Nye's podcast about memory. Yeah. This man's making fat bucks off of us right now. <laughs> um, not sponsored by Bill Nye. Yeah, not a sponsor. Uh, we, but it was about memory, and she was very into it. I was very into it. Mm -hmm. um, and I drove past her mom's house where her car was parked. And I was like, <laughs> I looked at her when we got to the uh, intermediate school which is not too far past her mom's house. And yeah. I looked at her and I was like, we forgot your car. So we, I go to turn around and she's like, I thought about telling you, but I was so busy listening to the podcast that I didn't. And immediately I looked at her and I said, how did you think? Because yesterday you, or when we first broached this, you told me if you think it comes out in words or action, there is no thought without a some form of physical um like a representation yeah that's a good word mm -hmm. this that's side note i'm gonna struggle sometimes on this podcast because words elude me that's fine and it bothers me so i'll just literally stop talking trying to think of it but yes so some some physical reaction i guess could be a good way to describe it mm -hmm. something occurs like and i i looked at her and I said, how did you think? How did you think that without telling me? But can you explain it, please? And she's, that's kind of what she, she said. Well, I thought it, and she's like, I guess I saw a picture of my mom's house. And I was like, okay, that, that, you know, that kind of helps. It still doesn't fully make sense to me. but that mm -hmm. kinda, So I guess she does in a way. I'd have to talk to her about it more. I'm oh again from my little research that was what i i had learned is that some people don't like think in words and full sentences they do think more on mm -hmm. something like a picture yeah <clears throat> which i think is very interesting um and so you came to me with this topic um mm -hmm. and i was just going through my normal listening of podcasts com kind of seemed irrelevant like it was in the back of my mind that you'd wanted to talk about this and then I had never really heard anyone address this, and then mm -hmm. I actually was listening to the the PKA podcast, which I mentioned to you before this pod before we started recording. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, so if you're not familiar with the PKA podcast, it's uh, mm -mm. Uh, FPS Russia, um, mm -hmm. as well as Woody's Gamer Tag, um, and then Taylor, who I don't think is well known for like any YouTube success or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But that topic actually came up in yesterday's episode and so i just thought that was very interesting um that that was in a way like it was there in the back of my mind and then it came up on something i was listening to that seemed that's completely good. irrelevant well, that's fine that's a good good little story and uh that uh also that podcast is four hours long so it's oh, plenty God. of entertainment <clears throat> four hours yeah that's a long one. So they do PK once a week, and they do PKN. So PKN is one hour, and then they also do PK, which is four hours. Mm. That's a long time to talk. Mm -hmm. And they have guests on this week. It was uh, David Negreanu, uh, 
a professional poker player. So mm -hmm. it's interesting to hear from someone like that, though, as well. So he wears glasses inside. He's lame. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he's actually against that. He talked about that, like, like the people who wear hats and glasses. He's like, oh, they're trying too hard. And he like stares right through them. I mean, they are trying kind of hard. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm all heated up, dude. I'm yeah. like, it, it just, I can't think about the way that they think. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So it's like trying to think and just completely, it's like almost like trying to think, how would you describe colors to a blind person? Mm -hmm. Like, and you can't do it. There's, you're just like, oh, the color blue. Like, I guess you could be like, oh, it's kind of. If it's a if it's a light blue, you could say it's kind of cold, but that doesn't mm. really do it justice. Mm -hmm. Um, so I also do have an inter in inner monologue. Mm -hmm. My girlfriend as well. I did ask her, and and she says, Alan, we both kind of agreed. So I think it's to certain extents like what the inner how active the inner monologue is. Yes. So, how active would you say yours is? Like how often are you hearing or like all the time? Okay that's that's what we came to as well like we're we yeah. both seem like like i explained it as it feels like my brain's on overdrive mm -hmm. like it just doesn't stop talking it never stops exactly always up there speaking up the storm for yeah. no reason mm -hmm. like so oh god i need to try to be clear and concise with my words i would also just... imagine someone who doesn't have it doesn't really have that problem yeah, so I guess that's a good place to start um, to kind of guide my thoughts. One of the questions I asked Alyssa, and I think this was asked in the interview, this this whole topic got brought up from what I saw. Somebody in, I think, college wrote an article about it because he saw something on the internet that not everyone has, and he was like, whoa, that's crazy. You know, I have it. Mm -hmm. And one of the first people he started talking to was a girl, and she didn't have one. And... So he wrote an article, he made a video, and it, it kind of, from what I saw, went pretty viral. I saw it multiple times posted on my Facebook yeah. uh, feed. So, and I was at work at the time, so I was asking all my coworkers, no one, no one at work doesn't have it that I talked to, which I think it was only like four or five people. Yeah, and like I had mentioned, I believe the majority of people do have it. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, not everyone, percentage. but... I tried to look up a percentage and I couldn't find an exact number yep. on, on Google. But that's one of the first things I asked Alyssa was, when you lay in bed, what do you do? And she said, I just lay in bed. I go to sleep. And she and her, she said, that's why I fall asleep so easily. Or that's why, like, when I get, we, we don't have a, uh, an argument all the time about it, but she wants me to go to bed. I don't want to go to bed. Yes, I, I can relate to this. Yeah, so we get into that little little debacle. A little spat. And, and she, but she's like, when I, that's why when it's dark and I'm laying down, it's bedtime. And mm -hmm. I'm like, so that makes sense because she doesn't have something in her mind. You know, when I'm laying in bed, I'm, I can think about something from 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. I can think about the future. I can think about something that happened today. Like there's no limits as long as I can recall it or, think about it happening i'm mm. essentially talking to myself about it without talking obviously yeah so it keeps I, uh, us up it's like how ahead. people say like your your mind is racing mm -hmm. like i guess people who don't have an inner monologue wouldn't have that uh that feeling that's yeah sensation yeah it's, oh, it's it just blows my mind i try to think about what it's like thinking without thinking and mm -hmm. that's where i get lost yeah. right and and i tried to, to to talk through this with my friend obviously we were working so it's a little difficult but it, our only perception of thought is our little voice our monologue that that narrates our life essentially you know if, if we look at someone we're thinking in our mind, we're saying, you know, I don't like their hair or I like their shoes. Yeah. I don't want to talk to these people. I Almost without even them. having a thought, you're thinking. Yeah. 
like oh. not it's almost like a subconscious thing like it is it, it, it i mean it is because we can't turn it off from what i've seen yeah I so it's like you I look at someone and you're not even thinking about their shoes but you're like oh those are nice shoes yeah without even thinking about their shoes like without realizing you're thinking about their shoes mm -hmm. and with someone without one they they don't they don't really do that they can't they're not thinking about them until they like engage in conversation with them because mm -hmm. their thoughts are physical and I think that's the biggest thing, that's the easiest way to, to explain it, is our thoughts are both physical when we think about doing something, but for us, thinking is also very mental. Mm -hmm. And in, in the fact that it can actually just happen in our mind with no one else being aware that it's happening. But for them, for the most part, their thoughts are physical. They think about something and they say it or they think about what they're doing so when they when they're watching tv this is the example that i've created in my mind mm -hmm. they watch tv and they're thinking about watching tv because that's what they're doing so that's what they're thinking about and when i watch tv i can think about pancakes even though i'm watching a show about dinosaurs you know yep. and they can't they they can probably do that in some way obviously we because we don't have that we can't comprehend it mm -hmm. i'm sure they can but it's just a lot easier to put that kind of. I think it'd be interesting to ask our friends if they have it, um, and especially, like, like get them on the podcast if they don't, um, mm -hmm. even more so. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, if we do this again. I'm not the podcast, but this topic, mm -hmm. which I would like to do again with some research involved. And yep. if we find out one of our friends don't, then they have to be here. I will force them <laughs> to be here to talk about it because I need to talk with everyone who doesn't have it and i would like to talk about it with anyone who does have it just to try to figure it out in my mind how to make sense of it because mm -hmm. it, it's still it's so foreign thinking to me is my internal monologue yeah and because it's like i mean it's like try like you said trying to explain color to a blind person someone mm -hmm. as someone who has seen color all their life and someone who was you don't know one. anything else yeah someone who was born without being without having the ability to see yeah it, like you can't you can't fully comprehend that even if because you you run through the scenario in your head i'm gonna say everyone's done it at some point when you were little you walked through your house with your eyes closed mm -hmm. to see if you could do it like like that was your mental test like oh if i could do this i could be blind right mm -hmm. and it's that's obviously so unrealistic, and it's it's just not because you know the layout works. at that point, as opposed to just not knowing any right. different. That's an okay example, I guess. It's just thinking about something that you can't comprehend as existing because you've never experienced it is a confusing thing for the human brain to kind of try to digest because we only know that. So trying to act like we don't, oh, it just. I guess somewhat similarly too, if you've ever tried to think about like what happens after death or if there's mm. like a deity, like a god, like those yeah. things are almost like you can't – like your brain just doesn't function in a way that can comprehend them. Mm -hmm. The most advanced computer in the world in your mind can't do certain things. It's yeah. Just, it can't do it. It doesn't have the capacity simply because they're so – it's such a deep question. It's like – the the origin of life uh they were talking about that on the bill nye podcast and and the scientist doctor lady said i it, that is unknowable mm -hmm. humankind will never know where life came from because it it's just it was so long ago it's just something that we'll never be able to gain access to it's it's an unknowable topic so i think and that's I like, like that kind of leads into like having a belief system like because we don't know some people are everyone's going to believe different things which is why i think it's very mm -hmm. silly like i'm very open-minded to people mm -hmm. thinking certain ways whether you think evolution creation like that's your belief system and like really who am i to argue with that because that's just what you you perceive to be reality in a way mm -hmm. um i but i'm open to hearing why you would think the way you do even if i don't personally agree with it Mm -hmm. I think it's an interesting topic to learn about, and it would just be ignorant to kind of pretend it doesn't exist in a way. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Can Can you update me on your uh, religious slash spiritual 
standing in the universe right now? Because yeah. in in my mind, you in the past have identified as a Christian. Right. Yes. Yep. But I've never pictured or got the idea that you are a uber devout like 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 Rhett and Link were when they were younger yeah, evangelical like, yeah. Christian like go so to church I don't think I ever church, got to the church, point church, church, church. yeah I never really got to that point I think it was mostly because I was younger um in that situation mm-hmm. I am no longer currently part of a church however there is I do still have a similar belief system that I do believe that there is a god um I choose to believe in the Christian God, mm-hmm. um, and it's not something I take super seriously. I don't like read the Bible or pray, like all the time, Daily. anything like that. Daily. Correct, mm-hmm. um, but that is my belief system, and and I was so again like kind of similar in in the evolution creation. I was a creationist, um, mm-hmm. thought that it was seven literal days that God. That's just how I grew up as well, so right. that was just kind of instilled in me. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking about the Rhett and Link thing, however, they were talking about the the books, like the science behind. Um, I believe they the book they suggested is the Language of God. Yes, that is one of them. Mm-hmm. So, sim, it's a, I'm actually I actually started listening or not listening to, but reading a book, uh, very similar called Signature in the Cell. Mm-hmm. Um, very similar concept. They even actually I'm in chapter one i just started um but they already have referenced that book um Mm -hmm. and i can't remember his name i know his last name's collins about he how he mapped the human human genome Mm -hmm. um so those books are about how evolution how evolution and christianity can kind of coincide Mm -hmm. um which is something i believe in or not i don't necessarily believe in it yet um it's just something i'm interested in learning about Right. So that aspect is intelligent design. Like we did evolve, but we didn't just evolve for no reason. Something mm-hmm. like a Darwinism, like natural selection, like, oh, it's just kind of random. Well, it's, I mean, that's it's not really random, but I get what you're saying. Well, that's the th- that's what they're talking about, really, is... I mean, so general Darwinism... Dar- Dar- Darwinism? Yeah, I think... Whatever word you want yeah. to use. We'll so that it. is like... But that is kind of the concept, is it's evolution over based on need it's yeah so it's survival of the fittest as well as like there is some random variables but it mostly Mm -hmm. is like these certain things these traits that help us survive are going to be the ones who survive and then you pass them down and that's how correct yes like i just had the conversation with my girlfriend recently where it's like elephants aren't being born with tusks because they were being because they're being hunted for tusks yeah and like having the conversation it's not like it's not like they choose to have no tusk because they're getting hunted it happens that the ones with tusks get hunted before they can breed and then the ones Mm -hmm. with little or no tusks can have the ability to breed and that genetic smaller tusk is passed down um so yeah i mean going back to your question though i i would consider myself so christian however i'm not like an evangelical christian um so so you how are are you a young earther please tell me you're not i used to be i guess that was kind of mean of me i i mean you you know where i'm coming yeah so this is again like i used to believe in the um creationism stand or creationism i think that's right in that it was seven literal days that god created the earth and everything and that the earth was only six thousand to ten thousand years old Mm -hmm. um that is something i did believe i i'm not very solid on a stance like that anymore um which is why i'm interested in reading this book um Mm -hmm. just going back and i don't know if they'll talk about it in this but i know like in the red link they talked about the like how fossils like the how everything like that works and and some of our like the vertebrae the second vertebrae is fused or things like that second chromosome oh yeah that one Mm -hmm. you're close yeah whatever (laughs) i haven't read the book yet i'm only chapter i actually interestingly enough i have the second chromosome pulled up because we were talking about this and it reminded me of it um yeah 
yeah, that that's one thing. So that's one thing that always got me um, about religion. I've never been opposed to religion. I fully understand why it exists and why it always has existed. And at the boiled down to its simplest fact is religion was created by man to explain the unexplainable. Yeah, so I I think um I I think a big reason that I personally believe in in like a Christian god mm-hmm. or the Christian god is because I never so in kind of in contrast, I never really understood atheism. I never really understood the lack of belief mm-hmm. as that just seemed kind of hopeless to me. Yeah. Um like so again, we talked about how we can't comprehend what's after death but if even if we can't once you want it to be something not Mm -hmm. nothing Mm -hmm. so like if you were to want to believe something then you'd want it to be good and and things like that so you want i just think it's more almost in a hopeful aspect Mm -hmm. and i'm not trying to like dis atheism or whatever that's your choice but in my perspective it's kind of just like my choice are you labeling me no (laughs) Okay. I don't know if you're an atheist. Like, I don't even know that, honestly. I was so. joking anyway. I'm going to tell you uh, it comes up, but I was just making a joke. As, so know, I think... Don't label me. I think, in a way, I, I like, I believe in, like I said, the Christian God, but it's almost more in a, um, what's the term? Agnostic kind of way. Mm-hmm. Like, so I don't know. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally choose to believe it's a christian god but i don't really know what's out there but i believe that there is a higher power i believe that there is something else out there i respect that can i make a recommendation yes instead of believing in the christian god can you believe in cthulhu i was gonna say odin can you pick a new a cooler one (laughs) one that wears like battle armor or something no i'm just kidding i i fully understand that like so I guess a little backstory in, in where I came from, like you said, when you were a child, you were kind of just in it, right? That's what your family was. Yeah, I mean, when I was young, I moved around a lot, but really always when we moved, not always, but a lot of the time it was like, okay, as, almost like right church. next to the question, like, where are we moving? Or like, what house are we going to buy? Was what church are we going to go to? Right. So, And I never had anything like that, which is weird. Um, I don't know if you ever met my grandmother. Have, did you ever meet my grandmother? Uh, is she still alive? She's not. She has passed away. Okay. I don't believe so. So, um, my father's grandmother, mm-hmm. my, my father's mother, my grandmother on my father's side. Your paternal um, grandmother? Yes. She uh, and my grandfather, who luckily is still alive, um, they were both not devout in terms of like i mean they were very devout christians i don't Mm want to i don't want to you know she's probably watching down i mean flipping me off or something but um like they went to church for the majority of my childhood really until they couldn't go any longer every sunday they were at church you know they went for christmas you know christmas eve like the mass on christmas eve yeah the whole shebang they they were super close with their pastor they their pastor brought him stuff you know the, so and i don't know where the disconnect happened with them and in father and religion but there was something i've never talked to him about it maybe i should it'd probably be an interesting conversation but my father because when he was little obviously he was in it too and at some point he kind of fell out of it somehow some way mm-hmm. somewhere along the road and and you know i would label him as a complete atheist yeah if you happen to listen to this father and i'm mislabeling you i apologize but i think that's what he is i would say he's completely devoid of any higher power maybe any belief system yeah any belief system that there's something of up there guiding our entire life and Mm -hmm. and what goes on um and i've never i've never really delved too deep into any form of religion other than like ancient greek religion i've also decided 
I'm going to start referring to them as religions and not mythology hmm. because at the end of the day, they are religions. They, yeah. they were their there religions. There were beliefs that they had. Yeah, I've made that conscious decision of, of upon myself to start <laughs> referring to them as religions as much as possible because that's what they are. Hmm. Here, just so while we're on the topic, like kind of related, I think you'll like mm -hmm. this analogy. Um, I forget where I've heard it, but so religion um so it's it's kind of like sex you know in this way that if you're forced to have it as a child you won't enjoy it as an adult mm -hmm. um so i think so in the situation of your father say like his parents were very devout and he was almost mm -hmm. forced to go right so then he chooses as an adult with that decision to not go or not have a belief system mm-hmm Maybe, that's just, maybe that's, what it is. That's just and, something that I know happens with, with people, so. Yeah. And that's one of, one of – I don't have many problems with, with any form of religion. There's each, each one has their own pick, pick your poison. Yeah. But that's one I, – I, I, don't, I don't think any child should be forced to – forced into it, right? Because at the end of the day, they don't understand – they don't really understand anything yet, right? They're like they're children, they're just there. You're, you're I, making I think, them go. I think it's good to encourage it, um, just because like kids left to their own devices aren't obviously the best. It doesn't always come out to the best result. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not gonna say force your kids to go. Right. What I think more importantly, like what I grew up with, and you even kind of mentioned it with your grandparents, like they knew the pastor very well, and I'm sure like the church, most churches are in a way like a, a community mm -hmm. i think that aspect is one of the best parts of religion yeah um being that like oh if you need help or your kids need help like they're there for each other mm -hmm. and i think that's something that's kind of going away in this newer age i think people are less close again kind of going back to even starting the podcast us talking mm -hmm. i think people are kind of shifting away like we're i think it was i think Rhett even said it in his podcast where it's like we're better connected than we've ever been, but we're all kind of stranded in a way. Mm -hmm. Like we can easily communicate with each other, but we're lonelier than ever. Like depression is yeah. higher than ever because we're not actually reaching out. And I think face to face contact, which hopefully the next couple episodes will be in person. Yes. Yes. I think that is just another degree, which even like texting as opposed to phone calls. Mm -hmm. it's just completely different yeah um i guess to label myself as something mm -hmm. i i wouldn't call myself an atheist i don't I, I don't not have a belief system i guess like i don't defy mm -hmm. any belief system like i'm not like there's nothing i'm um i think the the best way to to put it is rat labeled himself as a a hopeful agnostic mm -hmm. um so he hope he doesn't know what it is you know if if there's anything but he's hopeful that there is something mm -hmm. i guess i would i think it, the the to put a little bow on it would be like a doubtful ag agnostic i don't know and i would never claim to know if there is or is not something mm -hmm. but the evidence that i've seen is leads me to have doubt yeah um and i think that's the best way to put it i i've i've never shamed anyone for being a christian i've never or well, i go christian because it's obviously where we live in new york we live in america it's across the world it's the largest religion well, yeah and it's very broad as well like there's different yeah there's, forms there's of so many different versions i mean judaism christianity and you know, muslim you're worshiping the same god mm -hmm. three branches of the same religion essentially so i've never been against it i've never been for it i've i guess i'm in this like weird and limbo middle ground where i'm just kind of like do what well, do what you need to do if you like Alyssa, she believes in reincarnation mm -hmm. and I, it's a very like it's a very loose belief i would say i don't think you know obviously she's not a uh she's i don't think she practices hinduism at all so so i don't think she's like 
you know, knee deep in, in anything like that. But she, she chooses to believe that when we die, we are, we are reincarnated. And Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful thing to, to have that thought. I mean, you might get reincarnated as like a cactus, but whatever, it's your belief. Even as like, what I would identify as a Christian is I, I think that the idea of reincarnation would be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Um, Not necessarily Mm -hmm. as like an inanimate object. I think reincarnated as another human or maybe like a a beetle yeah (laughs) as another living thing but like just i mean if you're like a beetle at least you're not gonna live that long so then you just hope and you roll the dice and hope to be a human again yeah um Uh, yeah i'm but you wouldn't know i was yeah it's true it's like a mind wipe and then you're just back restarted and as a beetle you have no sentient thought of religion or the concept of It'd be a whole whole finagling thing that you would never really understand in the end. I think that's Which a I cool think, concept, however, like reincarnation. No, it is. It's a cool concept. I think a lot of religions are a cool concept. Like, yeah. I, I've always enjoyed studying the ancient Greeks and Roman know, myth- Egyptians oh, and Roman religions and all those. Yeah, because it's just it's such a cool way to think. Like back then you know they used we'll just say we'll we'll go up to to the norse gods they used odin the all seeing the all father right Mm -hmm. um and he was kind of like the all powerful the the leader the ruler of asgard and then he he, all his children and offspring and there was the aesir and all these different worlds the the realms that yeah something like that though too like um even though asgard is like that's like a physical that would be a place mm-hmm. in odin's the ruler but there still is a uh like a heaven yeah valhalla right yep. it's where where the, if you're uh, usually if you if you've died in battle yeah an honor, honorable warrior correct yep um and uh i i don't think you read them i don't know if you're like have you read the rick riordan like the percy jackson books um i owned them when i was little Mm -hmm. i don't own them anymore regretfully so i own like all of them Mm -hmm. and i think even like it's it is meant for intended for younger readers right but i read them probably in my early to mid teens Mm -hmm. i still i think they're a good read if you're interested in something like greek uh you have the percy jackson series Roman and Greek are very similar. They actually kind of bleed into one another in the Percy Jackson series um, to Heroes of Olympus. Um, they have an Egyptian one. They have, I believe he recently, somewhat recently started um, the Norse mythology. Or, so. mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think th- those are very interesting. They are very interesting. Yeah, I have the first cool. one of the Norse one mm-hmm. called The Sword of Summer. I read about I half of it and then just stopped. I don't know why, but I think I think those are are good books. I enjoy those books. I wish the movies were better. That would have been really cool. Yeah, those movies are trash. And even then, well, I I enjoy them for what they are. I guess. Had you read the books at that point? No. Yeah, that's. I think that's the difference. Um, I thought they were doing, um reboots i've seen things about a reboot yes that's so if they do that i hope hopefully they would do that effectively but it says yeah percy jackson reboot may happen at disney according to rick riordan and that was december 16th 2019 so if we get like a disney plus ooh, a disney plus percy jackson reboot mm-hmm. i'd be down I would I would also be down for that. All right, I know you had a uh, a surprise topic. Have we covered it or is it still No, we have not. Okay. And I think so we we didn't discuss too thoroughly before we started. Are we going to one is are we going to do any break at all? And obviously normally in a podcast if there was a sponsor you would do a sponsor break, but we're plebs. Yeah, I mean, um, if we had sponsors then I'd be more interested in a break. Um, would you like to take a break or how would I you mean, like to do this? No, not not necessarily right now. I was just curious. I guess that's just a general question. I mean, we are at fifty one minutes. 
Well, that was my next question is how long we've been doing this and what is our target time? Um, I'd say stay s relatively close to an hour, hour and a half, somewhere in that range. Okay. So I'm not, it's not like a hard and fast rule. If we end up going over, I'm not worried about right. it. I, I think an hour minimum is good. And then after that, you know, we'll see where the wind blows. Yes, correct. Um, so I think, honestly, I think the surprise topic could be a good way to end it um, okay. in all honesty. So um, I don't know where I thought of Well, I know why I thought about this, obviously, because we've been talking a mm -hmm. decent amount lately and we play games a lot. So you've been on my mind. Um do you remember the first time that we met? I do not. Do you? I also do not. And this was actually something I was going to bring up recently when you, or not recently, but even on this podcast when you asked if I would ever met your grandmother. And I was thinking to myself, I'm like, you, Colin, you know, we haven't actually been friends that long. No, we, I know, no, we haven't. And I know, I don't remember. So in my mind, Right, mm -hmm. I I don't know the exact. It, I have to imagine we were probably at Matt's together. I would assume point. so. I just don't know when. I don't and know I, how we started talking like individually though either. I so I do know when my my life has been weird. Okay, mm -hmm. this is this is a tangent from this friendship conversation, and then this will probably happen regularly because I can't keep a train of thought on the same rail for about more than two seconds. It's a problem. I'll I'll go so I'll go to uh, my friend group with Ronnie first, and then I'll jump into ours quick. So my friend group with Ronnie, it's it's me, him, uh, T Wag, and Tez. Mm -hmm. And it used to be a lot bigger, but those four, and you really those three are the core. Everyone else is revolving. Um, but I was friends with Ronnie, and when we all played Call of Duty together, I was invited to that group. We were in a party chat, and I eventually got. I'm really close with Tez, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been, obviously, I don't play games too much, so I don't play with them too, too often. But I've, yeah. I've always been much closer with Tez than I was with T Wag. I've gotten closer with T Wag recently, like when the most recent Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare came out. We got closer. Um, and I never felt too, too comfortable playing with anyone when Ronnie wasn't there. Yeah. And it was the same, same way when I, when Matt first introduced me into your guys's friend group which yeah. i vaguely remember but i still kind of even that is a little foggy um it so, was the same way like if matt wasn't there i didn't really want to be there yeah so i i'm gonna we can talk about this more too so um you and matt became friends when uh i mean when we were i don't know the exact time period we were little at bowling yeah, when we were younger, I would say twelve. Maybe. So we actually had you and I had well, we had I mean, kind of known school, of each other with, in yeah, a way. Yeah, I was friends with middle Matt with middle school, but yeah. So, later. um, like our brothers actually bowled together at at high school in high school. Um, mm -hmm. so that's interesting. Um, but I guess there like that was a thing you and I. Like my parents had brought it up, like oh, I remember like when they were bowling. He, Colin would be running around. I obviously I was little, so I don't remember. Yeah, I, I don't remember it either. Like I'm like, oh, I was probably just playing my DS, playing Pokemon Pearl or something. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I was friends with Matt and became friends with Matt in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. Um, and then fifth grade, and then after that, I was homeschooled. Right. So I didn't become friends with any of the other people he became friends with. And then when you had mentioned Ronnie, Ronnie and I didn't like each other. <laughs> no one liked Ronnie when he was little. Yeah, so he was kind of like, like, in class, being honest, like, in fifth grade. I mean, so Ronnie and I were in the same fourth and fifth grade class as well as Matt. Um, mm -hmm. But he was kind of like the bad kid, or like the troubled kid, I guess. And I was always like a kiss ass. Um teacher's pet kind of thing so mm -hmm. i never liked him for that reason um i don't have any I, I like ronnie now but right but so after that matt ronnie and i actually ha were a bowling team together um dude i like this is i knew ronnie bowled i yep. I, I 
this is all so crazy. Yeah, so that was Matt, Ronnie, and I were a team um, mm. for a Saturday morning league when mm. we, it wasn't at Broadway, is that, was it, what was the other one that was in, in Hudson Falls? BNC. Yeah, I thought it was, but I couldn't remember. I mm. actually still have my BNC Lanes t shirt from when I was that, when I, when that happened. Nice. Um, yeah, so we were actually a team at that point, and I remember there was one day where I don't remember what I was doing, but it was very much annoying Ronnie, but it I think it was more annoying him because he was doing bad mm-hmm. to the point where his mom ended up taking him home. Um, and, like, after the first or second game, he was just done. Like, she just was like, all right, we're leaving. So, hmm. fun story, I guess. Yeah. And then later on... um. Matt and Brandon became friends. Uh, mm-hmm. This is kind of like the history of our friend group now at this point. Right. Right. Um, this is that a good was place to start that too. was through Matt's ex, obviously. Um, yeah, I yeah. I don't know if that was obvious to you, but. Um, no, yeah. No, I knew that. I knew that. Okay, so then I knew Brandon before I knew you. Yes. And I knew Manny. I I, I met Manny and Matt about the same time. I met Manny through church. Yeah. Um. Which is kind of funny if you look at Manny now, like you would never guess. But uh, so I knew them about the same time. I was probably 10, 11, 12, somewhere in that range. Mm-hmm. And uh, so then Brandon became part of the friend group. And Zach, I don't really know when he entered the picture, really. Um, but then after that, I know it was after that that you and I became friends. So. Yeah, I was the last one added to the friend group yeah um and i'm not i'm not going to include uh and again if you're listening and i offend you i apologize i'm not going to include like joel or aiden obviously that's like matt's other friend group that he had correct so we're just kind of talking about ours um but i was the last one added and i so i'd have to think what happened was matt invited me over while you guys were there I think that has to that's the only logical reason like the the first memory I have not the first memory I have but I remember Matt had a party and you were Ronnie and I were there I don't oh, know the party that was yeah that actually was another story I had yeah um that's the first time Ronnie and I had seen each other in however many years mm-hmm. it was Matt's graduation party yeah okay it was Matt's graduation so and I the remember- first thing Ronnie ever said to me at that party will go is Tyler and I go yeah he goes I love you <laughs> And I go, I love you too, Ronnie. And I had no idea because you, we, we weren't in the same fifth grade class, but you and Ronnie were, and I, I was in the class across from. We were you in guys. the same grade, but we, not yeah, the same we class. Same we were in the same grade, um, but I had Mr. Kugler, and I don't remember who you guys had. I had Mr. Know? Paris. Yes, and they were those those classrooms were right across from each other. Yeah. And I, I want you to know, like, I had no idea you existed uh-huh. at that time, like. There's no memory in my mind of you being a human being until I first met you in I'm, we, I had to be in high school, right? Like I don't think we met in middle school. I don't I, was I don't Obviously even we I think you might have been graduated by the time we met. No. Were we There's friends no before way. Matt's graduation party? I think not that I mean we were both in that circle still. I, I was because we had played do you got to think right so oh for sure because the i can look up the magics right i could look up the magic sets since we were playing we were dragons of tarkir came out in 2013 i'm gonna double check so i don't right remember now. um doing that i don't remember uh, if dragons you, of tarkir you, will, you but... will know you will know i'll tell you because i'll tell you the names because matt and i still use the cards from this set Oh, oh, you're right because the Necro Dragon. I don't know if you're right, but I'm I know right. my my first magic experience with Magic the Gathering was I bought the Speed vs. Cunning um, mm-hmm. intro yeah. decks. Yeah, which apparently are the worst like intro decks ever made, but well, they were cool. I used the Speed one just to let you know. Yeah, a listener. Um, I don't even know if I have those decks together, but but. So, and that that's just a referencing a time in 2016. Dragons of Tarkir came out in 2013, and we were playing uh, before Dragons of Tarkir came out, I believe, or at least around the same time. So 2012, at the least, we were 
that that was when I had kind of first entered that friend group was probably around that time. Yep. So yeah, about freshman in high school, maybe the summer leading into that. Cool. Well, because you have to think, we played games. We played Black Ops 2. When did Black Ops 2 come out? Mm. This is cool. I'm glad we're doing this. I'm yeah. looking it up. Listen to my clickety clackities. I'm actually, while you're doing that, I'm doing a long scroll back in our group chat uh, to see mm. when you were added. See, so Black Ops 2 came in uh, 2012. So this this is kind of all lining up. I Because I distinctly remember playing Black Ops 2 with you. You under the moniker of tie guy 73 73 yes um uh, so it had to be around this time period it's all kind of lining i don't up, think right? it was that long ago hmm? so the, the group so it's not a good talking in the group chat though i found like i actually as you said that i said um should we play black ops or black ops 2 and that was 2017 so it's not like we didn't go back to those games no, well, and what I what I will say is, so I was added to that group chat way later, like we were friends in way in real life, but bef way before I was I, added. To that group I don't think chat. we we're like great friends, but we knew of each other. Would be the better way to describe. Yeah, that's it. what I mean. Like I was in the, but we weren't friends first, and I wasn't friends with that. And that's what I was trying to get at. I wasn't friends with anyone in that group except for Matt. Like I would not have done anything with you guys if matt wasn't there now i would i like like i had me i had you guys all over but you know i i don't think i would ever just hang out with yeah me. so our our friend groups actually kind of merged like manny and i were friends separate yeah. from matt colin brandon mm -hmm. but then yeah, they kind of I merged didn't... to make this bigger one obviously for my mm -hmm. friend group it was only me and manny but but now manny spends more time with matt than i do which I think is kind of right. weird, but I guess I'm surprised. I don't know. Do you remember? Do you do you do you remember how long it took me f to meet Manny? Like I, oh yeah, I, you said is, is there's literally real? in one of our I videos where you said is Manny a real person? Yes, is Manny a real person? Because I I had never met him. That's like it's crazy. But yeah, I don't remember when we first. Now that I'm talking about this, it, the time period at least is kind of lining up. All right, while but, I'm back here. I just found Matt had the 216th in the world record on Shangri-La. So I just saved that picture. I'm going to send that to him later. Nice. He was so proud of that. <laughs> Which he should be. 216th in the world is pretty cool. Yeah. Not bad. I'm trying to think. I had I was, I was had a pretty decent record uh, in Dirt Rally 2.0. Mm-hmm. I had a lap time. I was pretty, I was like up in the top 1,000th, I want to say, maybe even top 500. And I was pretty proud of that. Whoa. I'm back to my first day at work, May 12th, 2017. You're getting pretty deep. I didn't, st I didn't like start there, but that's fine. I looked up Smash because I'm like, well, I met Brandon at a Smash tournament. That was the first time I ever met Brandon. Mm -hmm. That was Smash Brothers Melee. I played the game for, two weeks before the tournament and i finished second so i was nice. pretty proud of that i wish i liked smash more i did tell matt that if he bought a switch and got smash that i would buy smash so if that ever happens i would buy smash but i'm not gonna buy smash you're not gonna buy smash probably not why will I'm you not, not buy good smash? at it because you don't play it enough we're way off topic at this point that's true but i mean that's fine so yeah, that, I just, I wanted to know if you remember. I definitely didn't. I mean, and yeah, I have like, like a vague recollection of us, like, not like precisely what time, day, blah, blah, blah. Mm -mm. I think, I know, I agree that it was most likely some event at Matt Matt's house where we actually met. Mm -hmm. So I was probably so quiet, dude. I'm so quiet when I get introduced to new people. I'm... Kind of similar, honestly, but I think I would have been more out of my shell just because, Matt, like, Matt was there and probably Brandon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My poor kitty's meowing at me. <laughs> I think that's, I think that'll be a good place to end episode one. Yeah, that's a pretty good spot. I feel, 
I feel good. I feel like this is exactly what I wanted it to be. Yeah, I think I think we covered most of our uh, topics that we wanted to, and obviously we have plenty more that we'll talk about. Like I said, dreams would be a very interesting topic later on. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think I think this was a good good foundation. It was. It's a good it's a good building block. All right. Do you want to do recommendations like written link too? Like anything you want to recommend? Um, I would like to do something like that because you asked. I will make a rec, but we don't have to. I mean, I'm open to do it. I would like to find something that maybe we can do. I think I think it'd be good just to share what help just, help anyone yeah. who may be listening get to know us a little bit better. Things where we like, we've been listening to, what not listening to, watching yeah. anything like that. Or or even if we do a topic that involves research say that this is where we got our research you should check out yeah um uh a wreck hmm i was just gonna make the general wreck of of be a good person right because I, I think that's important and that's it, a good it's recommendation not done, it's not done nearly enough in today's society mm-hmm. but i'm gonna recommend and this is the only moment i will ever hope that somebody listens to this is when i make this recommendation right now and i know you'll appreciate it open your spotify type in P A C K Y. If you enjoy rap at all, if you dabble in it, if you enjoy it, look up Packy. I'm um, gonna I'm gonna add on to that a little bit. Or I also agree with if you uh, look up Spectators. Yeah. Well. So, so yes, yeah, Spectators. Which the Spectators Collective? Some something. Yeah. I don't have. I don't, there's no video on this episode, but. I am wearing the Guess You Had to Be There merch right now. Mm-hmm. The I Was There hoodie. And I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there when that drops. I'm going to be there in spirit. I'm probably going to get it. Maybe that's what it'll be. Alyssa and I kind of decided that with our tax returns, we're both going to get like 100 bucks each to spend. So maybe uh, I bought a controller. So that was the new controller. It was about 60. So my other 40, maybe I'll pick up the hat. Mostly because I need it. I need to have my bald head. But <laughs> and if we do a video version, I would. I would wear a hat. I think. Um. um I mean, worst case scenario, I can just send you some, uh, like the link or whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and well, don't say that on the internet. Insider trading. <laughs> yeah, you might get killed. They're gonna put a hit out on you. Yeah. But yeah, that's my wreck. Ot is uh, gonna come for me. Yeah. Uh, I agree. Uh, Spectator is definitely make good music my favorite music i i I think i think that's uh that's a ballad so listen to delirious and 517 and my foundation shouts out to my mom (laughs) shout out colin's mom uh and dear rap game that's a banger with that four I, i gotta do another one uh and power up so i um i made a playlist uh for vacation Mm -hmm. um called hawaiian shirt jams and 15 of the songs are packy songs Mm -hmm. so i i mean just i'll name a couple of mine is the i think the basement freestyle is really good that is a really good one yeah i vibe with finding my balance Finding my balance is a banger. Um, not Packy, but spectators cannot relate. I mean, it's featuring Packy. Well, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I like that one. Mm-hmm. Even going back to the Spec Sixteens, I got some of those mm-hmm. on there. My syllabus. Yep, Airhead and Pro Shop. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, I mean, he even has one featuring Tory Lanes, so that's kind of a big deal. He does. That's a good song. Slide is good. Slide. Mm-hmm. But the reason I have them is is there's quite a cup there's quite a few of the songs which are just summery. Yeah, obviously it's not summer, but I'm going to Florida and it's gonna be warm. Mm-hmm. It's like groovy chick. Groovy chicks, a bop. That's yeah. a that's a vibe, dude. It is. I I want him to be more recognized. I do. I want him to be the most famous a famous person can get. I, I agree. I honestly, it. I've. Talked about this with my girlfriend. I don't understand why he's not more popular. I I get that he's a smaller label, so he's not as much marketed. Right. But his music is so good. 
It's so good. But the grassroots fan is it's kind of cool to be a fan like when he's not that big and I've been a fan for so long. Mm-hmm. I've been a Art fan since epic. nobody epic was oh, putting yeah, him nobody epic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nobody epic was putting him as the intro all and he's like that's my friends the spectators. Yep. I remember when what album was it that came out? Oof. I specifically remember he pushed the parlay pretty hard. Yeah. Um but even like my uh the I'm blanking on the name of it. Same difference. Same difference. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the parlay he was pushing. I literally remember watching Nobody Epic videos, like awkward yeah. situations. Yeah, I do too, exactly. On awkward situations, yep. And that's twenty thirteen. Yeah. That's a good seven years. Mm-hmm. I've been listening to the spectators at least since I was fourteen. Same. That's kind of crazy. It is kind of crazy. But they're still making bops to this day. They've gotten better. That's true. But so, I agree. The spectators are good. Check them out and. uh that's you can right. always look forward to episode two coming out from us. Um, mm-hmm. Hopefully we'll get that to be a video. I hopefully. think uh, that's our goal for most episodes to be video. Unfortunately, schedules didn't align perfectly this week. Um, so as you see on the screen, if you're watching on YouTube, which I don't know why you would be because there's nothing to mm-hmm. watch. It's just our logo. Um, and we're going to work on getting on to some other streaming services for you to listen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's so the I- goal. Of course, I think uh, I think that's that's gonna wrap up episode one, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode, and we look forward to you seeing us in the next episode. Yes, and multiple episodes after that. Yes, and we would like to thank you for listening to Thought Grenade, right? So yes, thank you. We'll have a better outro next time, hopefully. Yeah, but uh, we didn't plan it. Yeah, all I'm gonna say is have a good one. Yeah, have a good night or or day, whatever it is. That's why I said one, because it's kind of vague. Enjoy your life. (laughs) There you go. Yes.